Happy New Year to you all. Woo! I feel good. Dun -a -dun -a -dun -a -dun. Oh, man, them collards is what's happening. The new year is coming. It is right up there knocking on the door it is. And we're gonna go through some of our family traditions and some of our best things to eat on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. First up, black eyed peas. And we ain't talking about the singing group. We're talking about them things. Where is my Southern people at? Y'all know this is a tradition. You know, they claim this tradition was really started during the Civil War and a lot by the African American soldiers that were there in camp. Dried peas were very abundant and they were easy to store and easy to cook. You just had to have a little water and maybe some hog back or some lard or anything to cook it with. And my dad said during the depression that they'd have a little old wooden keg, a barrel that had dried peas in it. And you could just take out whatever you was gonna cook that day, put them in a little water, cook them like that. And they made it all the way through the depression and the dust bro, living on what? Black eyed peas. So my first recipe suggestion for you is poor man's sausage. It's just black eyed peas that you've cooked down and then mashed, you add some flour, add some seasoning, add some eggs to bind it together and fry it. It's called the New Year's Mash. Get you about a tablespoon of this stuff, make you a little ball. Hey, there's some sizzling going on. It don't take long for these to cook, but they will brown on both sides. I'm gonna give you a little hint. If I was gonna do this again and remake that video, I'd put a piece of green chilies in there or something like that to give them a little more flavor. But hey, these things are so easy to make and they're great for a New Year's Day breakfast. Next on the list, and a lot of times on New Year's Day, what is it? It is cold. And what's gonna warm you up better than a good old bowl of soup? And we're talking about cowboy collard green black eyed pea soup. You know, collard greens is also a tradition to put with black eyed peas because the black eyed peas are bringing you luck and the collard greens are green, which is what? Gonna bring you dollar bills. So don't leave either one of them out. I want you to have luck and I want you to have good fortune. But when you cook them collard greens down, you gotta always remember right there at the end, give them a little splash of vinegar. Now, my daddy told a story one time that we was working down there in the cow lot and we just stepped in our green for well. But you ain't got no cow patties to step in, folks. You can just do it this way. We're gonna let this cook down just a minute or two here. And my mother said you wouldn't cook in true collards if you didn't add a little of that white vinegar to it at about this point. About two teaspoons, which is about a big cap full of this right here. Go ahead and let that cook down again. It breaks down the acid and the bitterness in them. Do you have any money on you? Do I have any money on me? No, I am broke. I haven't had a, <laughs> I haven't had a collard green or a black eyed pea today. When you put this together and you can use a fresh ham steak or you can use bacon in it, this is a meal that will warm you throughout on New Year's Day and every day thereafter. Now, I don't care what you're doing with your black eyed peas. I mean, where you just bust a can open them, eat them right out of the spoon and you're through and over, or you're cooking this collard green soup, or you're making the poor man's sausage. But folks, you gotta pair it up with some good cornbread. And traditionally, we would always have a fried cornbread to go with this. You know, and speaking of fried cornbread, you can't forget our good buddy John Wayne and them corn dodgers where we was cooking on a shovel. Them too would go good with them black eyed peas and them collard greens. Can you give me your best John Wayne? Impersonation. Oh, well, good luck, Pilgrim. Hello, Pilgrim. Hello, Pilgrim. Yo, Pilgrim. <laughs> get your shovel from the garden or the flower bed. Try to get the excess dirt or cow poop or whatever you got on it wiped off there. But I'm going to cook mine like the settlers would if they were in a hurry in a shovel. But to get them done a little quicker, and I'm sure they did, mash them just a little. But when you see that, if it cracks, crimp them edges back together where it's gonna sit right there, find you some hot ones. How long does this cook? Till they're done. A 
Let's talk about something on New Year's Eve that all of you are probably going to be doing. And what is that? Having a drink. But folks, I ain't talking about just drinking that liquor. I'm talking about cooking with and making something that is sweet, especially a dessert. Whew, I love to add some whiskey to them. I do. And this episode really reminds me, we went back to an old historic ghost town in Eureka, Nevada, met some great people there with a bourbon company. Oh my gosh. And what did we make? One of my most favorite desserts ever. And what is it? A flan. I didn't even know what flan was till I got to researching this. And this is really a Mexican dessert. It is. But nobody told me that you could put bourbon in it, but we did. And folks, I'm going to give you one really good tip if you're going to make this. When you go to make that caramel sauce that goes on there, make sure you do this in a non-stick skillet. Do not ruin your piece of cast iron. One cup white sugar. We've got this on about medium high heat. And we're just going to let it sit there till we begin to see this begin to melt that sugar a little. We're going to make the caramel sauce. Honey, what do you think we should use to go in this dish? Which one? <laughs> got our pack leader reserve, which is a nine year old, 100 proof. We've also got our Eureka Gold. Thinking the Eureka Gold will be delicious in this. It's 92 proof and it really stands up in recipes. There Ooh. we go. It just pours <laughs> about a tablespoon full in there. A little more sugar. Woo. All right. Lauren, can you say, say mic check 475238? <laughs> mic check. <laughs> There you go. Absolutely. We're just going to pour a little in each one of these and get hard and crystallized. Like it is, and I usually try to make a design of a country. Can you tell which one that is? Australia? It's, it's Africa and Australia okay. combined. Yes. <laughs> We're going to turn one over here on your plate, and we're gonna pray here in a minute that it comes out. And I like to just crumble back up on top here. It's so rich. Mmm, mmm. So mmm. Mm. Bust a move, girl. Let it happen like James Brown. There you go. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm. Mm. You know, when we were doing this episode, I got to meet two really special guests that were there. The namesake of this bourbon company. It's called Two Bitch Bourbon. But they're Sage and they're Scarlet. They named it after them two Dobermans there. Such sweet puppies they are. And hey, we had a great time with Lauren and her crew. Be sure and check out that episode there in Eureka. Well, you made it through New Year's Eve. I mean, it's 11 o'clock. You just now got up. You done slept through most of the day. And you might be having that old thumping feeling in the back of your head. Folks, it is time to create a breakfast that's going to get you over this deal to make you think, hey, I can survive. Now, everybody's heard of an egg in a hole sandwich, right? Don't be buying no cheap sausage. Make sure it is a good pork sausage or make you some chorizo. That would be even better. But you've got to make sure that you make that sausage patty bigger than your bread because if you just make it the size to fit that bread and when it cook and shrink down you're not getting meat in every bite they put a heel in a loaf of bread for one reason you put it down here and you think if we just made our sausage to fit that it would not be big enough because it's going to shrink up so i like to use them as a guide and you can see if we sort of outline this, that's how much bigger we are than that piece of bread. But make sure you add cheese to it and make sure you fry that cheese on the bottom of that sandwich, the top of that sandwich, and when you put it together, it is a cheesy goodness, a full-blown meal that will get you over that hungover. There we go. Nice. We are looking good. He ain't gonna get that off at fire, is he? Crack it on a hard surface and just let her go in there. Oh my gosh. We'll get this other one right there with it. I need you to take a knife or a fork and just mix all this up. Remember these little pieces? We gotta have them. Put them right down in there. Get a little bit of that butter right there on them. Now, we just gonna go ahead and give them a sprinkling of finely shredded cheddar cheese. Not just on the egg, folks, but everywhere. So let's take this and see what's happening under here. Give him a little flip. Because we want that cheese over there to get good and melted. 
One more coating of cheese, folks. You can't get enough cheese. You just can't. Namaste. And here is the mage, the duker, the lulu. There you go, Cletus. Cletus, I think that is the first breakfast. No, you ain't getting no more, buddy. You sure ain't. All right, you, you, you're awake and you're looking around the room and there's a lot of empty bottles maybe laying around. Maybe somebody left just enough bourbon in one of them bottles that we can make one more dish to get you over this. You know, we'd always hear that deal about the hair of the dog. So what are we making? Eggnog French toast. Not just dipped in milk, dipped in eggnog that we made. But what has it got in it? It's got some of that bourbon that's gonna go in there with it. But make sure that you sop it really good. And a mistake that I've made when I've been doing it is don't leave that bread in there soaking. It will fall plumb apart and make sure it is thick bread. Don't get you none of this little thin toast. Buy you some of that Texas toast, the big stuff. Soak it on one side, soak it on the other, but roll it around them edges. And when you fry it on there, bring it off there and set it back. Mm. You put some of that good old maple syrup over there, or you can even what? Mix a little bourbon in that maple syrup, pour it all over the top, sprinkle it with some of that there powdered sugar, and what do you got? You got something that's gonna make you wake up and pay attention. I don't care how bad that head is thumping. When you got it on turbo. That's why I'm gonna need shoulder replacement. <laughs> We're gonna add three-fourths a cup of this homemade adult version eggnog, which is that much right there. And I can done gear and told you, as Justin Wilson would say, this stuff is going to be larping good. See if you can get them eggs broke up really good if you can find them in there. Here goes the first contestant. Dip him down in there. Get him good on both sides. I like to try to get the edges a little if I can. You may have to give him a little mashing. Right, let me move this one and okay. I'm gonna go right here. Go for it. Oh, yeah, well, Are you, oh, you're going through all four layers. <laughs> I have to make sure it's right. As we look back at the year that has passed us by, we are so grateful and so thankful to all of you for watching our videos, for just letting us in for a part of your life. It means so much to us, it does. Me and Shan and the pups are all so thankful. But as we look forward in the new year to come, I just ask everybody, let's have New Year's Day every day. Let's celebrate every day, just glad to be alive. But let's not forget the people that are around us, the things that we can do to help each other. Let's make this the best year ever to help someone feel better in life. But it is with great pride honor and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag flying over camp. We commend you all. What is the best way to start off a New Year Day? A big old hug from Cowboy Ken. God bless you each and every one and we hope you have a very blessed 2024. Whoo, the New okay, Year. Don't do whoo because it's hard on my mic. I'm sorry. Whoo. <laughs> <laughs> Shan says it's too loud, so you can just, you can't go, yeah, woo. Every time you do that, woo wee, it like peeks out my mic. Oh. It's time to get festive, and breakfast is the best place to tart. Tart. Oh. We're doing a homemade eggnog and a French toast. French toast with homemade eggnog. Sorry. What are we talking about? Homemade French, nope. What is it? Eggnog French, French toast. toast. French toast and what is it? French toast with a homemade eggnog. Homemade French nog toast. French nog. <laughs> French nog toast. That sounds yummy.
Hey, Pilgrim, it's too hot to cook out here. We should move to Alaska. Where's makeup? I need makeup, I'm hot. <laughs>